Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The national transmission company South Africa was officially launched this week. Sharon Screamer joins me to discuss the milestone and what's next for the entity. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. What is the background to the formation of the NTCSA and why is it important? Well, the background is that we are unbundling uh, the vertically integrated monopoly that has been Eskom for 100 years. And that's really to align it with the big changes that are underway in the electricity system, not only in South Africa, but globally where there's going to be much more competition at the generation end, and there's going to be also more competition at the distribution end. We already have a fairly disaggregated distribution sector, probably too much so, given that there's a lot of municipal distributors in the sector. Maybe there's a need for restructuring consolidation there. But at the generation end, we're just starting to see the, the new IPPs coming through. And the key backbone, the system operator and the wires that take uh, the high voltage wires that take the electricity and move it across the country, that is always going to be a monopoly business. But it needs to engage with the distributors and the new entities that are coming into distribution around trading, aggregation, etc., in a fair way, and likewise with generators. So we need this independent level playing field and an independent system and market operator. And that's what is starting to emerge uh, with the uh, separation of NTCSA. Still at this stage remains a wholly owned subsidiary of Eskom. It, it's a very tricky thing to fully unbundle because of the high amount of debt that sits on the Eskom balance sheet and the allocation of that debt is tricky. And also, you know, bondholders are nervous about uh, the way that's going to be uh, uh, re redeemed in the, in the long run, so they haven't fully separated it, but the Electricity Regulation Act, which is, is coming through, it's been um, uh, assented to by the President, it's not yet in force, but that basically says that this entity is going to really separate, become a transmission system operator in its own right, and be separate from the Eskom business in future, and it's got a, a time frame of about the next five years, and in the process, we have to get in market codes and a whole lot of regulation that's going to have to be needed to support this new legislative framework that's emerging. So it's a, it's a big change in South Africa's electricity supply industry. And this is one step in that big change, the formal launch of the NTCSA, which has been operational now since the 1st of July. What are some of the immediate priorities for the entity? I think the, the big thing is that we know grids become a constraint to the connection of new, mostly renewable electricity, uh, mostly in those provinces like the Northern Cape, the Western Cape, the Eastern Cape, where the grid is not really available at the, at the size and the scale that is needed to evacuate power from those regions. So that's the big ticket item on the agenda of the NTCSA. And uh, in order to get there, uh, it's got a transmission development plan that wants to roll out, as everyone knows, 14,000 kilometers of, of new power lines over the next 10 years and, uh, and, and different substation capacity uh, aligned to that. And uh, that is really to be in a position to ha connect 53 gigawatts of new capacity, which is a, a lot of electricity. So that's the big plan. The immediate priority is to actually secure some of the finances for that. And th that's a big if because we know there's, a, a, there's an application in front of the regulator as we speak that's been submitted by Eskom but has broken up the different uh, revenue uh, asks uh, for the different divisions, generation, NTCSA and distribution which is in the process of also being unbundled and uh, generation eventually. Um, so th that's a big question mark. Will they get the, what they're looking for? Uh, they, it's uh, about 115 billion of the 460 billion plus that Eskom is asking for in revenue for next year. Will they get it? And the other big thing is, will they keep it ring fenced? Because in the past, uh, NTCSA, or well, the transmission division had an allocation in the revenue allowance, but that was never really filtered down to their projects and to their business. It was, it was you know, distributed through the central 
Eskom uh, whole, uh, company into where the, the greatest need for finance was, and that was really around mm -hmm. the generation business. So that's always been a problem, so they need to secure that. And then the other big ticket item on the agenda is to find a framework, because I think there's an acceptance now that NTCSA, with its lack of balance sheet, with its lack of capacity, doesn't really have what it takes to build at the scale that we need. So to find a framework that allows for pri private sector participation. So I think those are the, the big priorities currently on its, on its agenda. Will the NTCSA be able to find a model to allow independent power transmission projects to play a role in accelerating the rollout of the grid? I think that is a, a very big question of the moment because we know that it's on the agenda. The Minister of Electricity, Jose Enzo Ramachopa, is, has, has made the case for RPTs. Well, in South Africa, we call them RTPs, uh, independent transmission uh, projects. And uh, there's been a lot of work about setting up the framework for starting to procure that. But it, it's clear from the launch this week that there isn't full agreement around that model. And it's really about the way the, the risk is distributed across the private sector versus the, the NTCSA and government. Government is making it clear it doesn't want more contingent liabilities on its balance sheet. NTCSA just doesn't have the balance sheet <laughs> to sort of back, the, give the guarantees that the RPTs would need. Uh, and the RPT needs some sort of framework for, for guarantees. Otherwise, they're not going to move ahead. So I think we're in this sort of uh, period of no man's land where we want it, but we can't quite settle on how we're going to go about it. Um, immediately, NTCSA says, look, they're going to, they're budgeting 112 billion on their own balance sheet for projects, and these will be delivered through their normal, um, their, their normal where they do, do the design and oversee the project, the private sector builds, and they also have integrated now more and more um, EPC model, where it will be more of a turnkey contract. That's for their own account, and they say they've got 112 billion, but there's also that would be dependent, I think, very much on what they get through the tariff. So if they do get what they need through the tariff, then they can start building and they can start delivering. They believe on their own, they can unlock about 30 gigawatts uh, by, by, by 2027, 20, 2030, that sort of per period. But there's a feeling that they really aren't going to deliver at the pace and scale that we need. So RPTs are going to be important. So we have to finalize this model. And uh, uh, I think there is a lot of work going on behind the scenes. We know that from a treasury perspective, they've been working with the World Bank and they've come up with some sort of guarantee framework that will sort of cushion both the NTCSA and the government, the national treasury balance sheets uh, in, in offering more and more guarantees and provide some sort of vehicle that hasn't been launched yet. But I think the medium term budget policy statement is a key milestone where there could be some announcement around first the first pilot project for an RPT procurement and the um, and then also how it's going to be facilitated in terms of the guarantee probably under a MIGA which is a which is a subsidiary of the World Bank a, a MIGA vehicle so we will have to wait and see what was going up but it's clear that there's not full agreement yet but there's also clear that we need to do it and there's a there's a skepticism that NTCSA can do this by itself and I agree with that I don't think NTCSA can roll out at the pace and scale that we need. We've already seen a very, very slow start to the delivery of the transmission development plan. There's going to be an updated version of that before the end of the month, and that's also going to require more. Because of the slow start, we're going to have to do more if we want to do uh, over the next 10 years than what we've done in the, in the last couple of years, if we really want to get to that level. So there's a long way to go there, but I think we need some certainty around that. Once a pilot project is announced, uh, also the procurement agent, what will that be? Will that be NTSCSA? I don't think that's what government's thinking. I think the thinking is there'll be a, some sort of office, like the RPP office, that will, um, that will run this procurement. And I think also the, 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 the whole approach will be that uh, it will be ring-fenced from the NTCSA, but the NTCSA will guard it and will be in charge of that asset. 
So what model would it be? Build, operate, transfer, uh, build, operate, own, transfer is less likely. But something like that uh, is on the cards. And I think there is appetite. <coughs> definitely the banks are really gearing up for it. And definitely private developers are, are gearing up for it. But we need a clear framework. And then once we have the framework, we also need the determination. That's a gazette notice. That should be fairly simple and straightforward. Say this is what we're going to procure, how many kilometers. This is, and then we're going to um, uh, need the, the guarantees, whatever that's going to be. And there's going to be a need for new regulation. So there's quite a lot to do uh, before I think we'll start seeing shovels in the ground. But I think the long term we will overcome this hump, but we're not quite over, over haven't quite I got over this hump yet. We have to agree on a model, and definitely there's not an agreement from what I can see between government, the National Treasury, the uh, Electricity Minister, and NTCSA. So we still have to get there. And once we have, hopefully we can start integrating private sector participation in the space. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.